Eighth grade illustrative math, unit seven, lesson 10, representing large numbers on the number line. Problem number one, find three different ways to write the number 437,000 using powers of 10. Let's start with 437,000 with a decimal point at the end. And let's get rid of the comma since we're going to be moving that decimal point to the left towards the four. If we move the decimal point to the left one place, it makes it 10 times smaller. So now it's 43,070 times 10 to the power of one. Move it one more time and you have 4,370 times 10 to the power of two. Move it a third time and you have 437 times 10 to the power of three. Move the decimal to the left a fourth time and you have 43.7 times 10 to the power of four. Move the decimal a fifth time and you have 4.37 times 10 to the power of five, which is written in scientific notation. These are the three different ways that I would write the number 437,000 using powers of 10. However, you could use any of the five expressions that I showed you. Problem number two. For each pair of numbers below, circle the number that is greater. Estimate how many times greater. Fortunately, the first pair of numbers are both being multiplied by the same power of 10. And I know that 17 is about four and a quarter times greater than four, so this number is also about four and a quarter times greater than this number. What are these numbers? Let's put commas in. One billion, seven hundred million is also about four and a quarter times greater than 400 million. The next pair of numbers are also being multiplied by the same power of 10. And since 7.839 is almost 8, it's safe to say that 7.839 is almost 4 times greater than 2. The last pair of numbers are being multiplied by a different power of 10. 42 times 10 to the power of 7, we'll just put 7 zeros to the right of 42 and 8.5 times 10 to the power of eight. We'll move the decimal point eight places to the right. So counting the five, that would be one, and then seven zeros for a total of eight. Let's put the commas in. Since 850 million is more than two times greater than 420 million, then 8.5 times 10 to the power of eight is more than two times greater than 42 times 10 to the power of seven. Problem number three. What number is represented by point A? Explain or show how you know. That long line segment on the bottom with point A on it is just a zoomed in version of this small segment on the top line. Here it is zoomed in. Let's start from the beginning to find its location. Here's one times 10 to the 11th power, two times 10 to the 11th power, 3 times 10 to the 11th power, 4 times 10 to the 11th power, 5 times 10 to the 11th power, 6 times 10 to the 11th power, and then now we've gotten to the zoomed in line. 7 times 10 to the 11th power, 7.1 times 10 to the 11th power, 7.2 times 10 to the 11th power, 7.3 times 10 to the 11th power, and here's point A, 7.4 times 10 to the 11th power. That's your answer. Let's keep going. After 7.9 times 10 to the 11th power, we have eight times 10 to the 11th power. Then nine times 10 to the 11th power. And since 10 times 10 to the 11th power is 10 to the 12th power, this represents 10 to the 12th power. Problem number four from eighth grade unit six, lesson seven. Here's a scatter plot that shows the number of points and assists by a set of hockey players. Select all the following that describe the association in the scatter plot. There is a linear association because all the data on the scatter plot resembles a line or somewhat resembles a line, which means that I can't select the nonlinear association. 
Since the data that's forming this line is moving upward, that means it's a positive association. Since it's a positive association and moving upward, that means that it's not a negative association moving downward. So I cannot select negative association. I also cannot select E, no association, because there is an association. There's a linear association and a positive association. If there were no association, the scatter plot would look like this, with data points spread all across the scatter plot with no pattern at all. Problem number five from eighth grade, unit five, lesson five. Here is the graph of days and the predicted number of hours of sunlight, H, on the dth day of the year, A. Is hours of sunlight a function of days of the year? Explain how you know. H is a function of D. For each value of D, there is only one value of H. B. For what days of the year is the number of hours of sunlight increasing? For what days of the year is the number of hours of sunlight decreasing? From day 0 to day 180, the hours of sunlight are increasing. And from day 180 to day 365, the hours of sunlight are decreasing. C. Which day of the year has the greatest number of hours of sunlight? The highest peak of this graph is day 180. So day 180 has the greatest amount of sunlight. If this tutorial helped you, please hit the like button and make sure you're subscribed. That's it for now. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.